what's up guys, it's Lego Hobo 910 here with another Lego video. And in this video I'm reviewing set number 76060, the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Aisha Revenge. Now let's get right into the review. So the first build is this little platform for Aisha. It's fairly simple, it's just some red and dark red, and to be honest, it really doesn't make sense. Because I guess you could say this is a spoiler. She never really fought face to face with the Guardians in the movie, so it's not like a huge spoiler or anything, and this, to the scene that this is supposed to be portraying, there was never any terrain around like this, I mean, there might have been some in the background that was just a bit darker, but I didn't notice it, but I mean, you know, it doesn't really seem important, but hey, it's a little bit of terrain, and it has this cool feature, this little pin sticking up here, and I think putting that there made it fairly well hidden, it's still pretty easily seeable, and obviously that it's an action feature, not just part of the terrain, but once you push that down, this pops off. It really doesn't pop off that violently. I mean, sure, you can hit this a lot harder, except really doesn't help. And I just broke the whole thing, so... Also, this kind of helps hold it together a decent bit. It's connecting to uh, multiple modules, so it doesn't really work the best. If you get the minifig off, that flies, except you want the minifig on there, so that way it looks like she was on the platform and then it explodes bloated, so I mean, it's, it doesn't work as well as it should with the minifig, without it, it's fine, except you want it to work with the minifig, so I mean, it's meh, but I really like this mechanism, it's really cool, if we just move this out of the way, you can see that it's just this very simple thing, when once you put this down, it supports this, and then when you push that, it's just a simple cantilever mechanism, so, really like the mechanism, the functionality with minifigs isn't exactly the best. Now we have this little drone for Aisha. And I really like this. It's really cool looking. Originally when I saw this before Guardians of the Gal before I saw Guardians of the Galaxy 2, I was like, well that's lame. You can't even put anyone in it, but it's a drone, so it, it makes sense to me now. And also it has a surprising amount of the media measure in here for it being mostly gold. Though I think they did uh, use the dark nougat a bit too much, I think they should have gone mostly with this pearl gold. And also there's some of those kind of new half macaroni plate thing, whatever they're called, pieces there. Overall, it's built really well and it's smoothly angled. And they use these uh, pieces here, these uh, weird slopey pieces, the 2x2 two two weird slope things and trans blue. And the way they connect on angles works perfectly. And it just looks really good, and it has these two kind of win, uh, win, win, thin wing things, and they have two ball joints, so they're poseable. Has two stud shooters on the side. Though sadly, since they're the minifig handheld ones, they angle out, and they kind of uh, ruin the build a bit. Then the thrusters on the back here are pretty good. There's two big ones, two small ones, and then just a tire in the center. So overall, I think that is a pretty good build. Much better than the uh, platform. Now we have the main build, which is the mine driller spaceship thingamajig from the movie. And first of all, I have one big complaint about it. They don't really show the mining laser thingamajig that is in the movies on here. They don't really portray it very well, but I mean, you can kind of use your imagination and pretend that the front things here are some of those lasers. And also that, as you can see, there's a little... Missile shooters, which I prefer over the stud shooters. I actually pretty like these. And this you just push in on the side and then it shoots. So you can imagine that that's one of those lasers. It doesn't really resemble the movie fun very much, but it works. And then also something to note, these side panels do fall off fairly easily. As you can see, I just bumped it off. And then on the bottom, there's these little blue kind of levitational things, which can be adjusted. And... If you manage to get them on the right angle, you're always just going to bump them around anyway. So, I mean, that's kind of a bummer. They get bumped super easily when you're trying to hold it. Because that's kind of the natural position to put some fingers on this. And I like the print on the side here with the Ravager logo. Except, it doesn't really make sense because this isn't the Ravager ship. And I'm pretty sure that wasn't there on the movie. But, hey, I'll just roll with it. And that's printed. There's also one of those on this side. On the top, there's a four stickers here on this big piece. That's a bunch to make it look a bit battle damage. And once again, why is the Ravager logo there? Ah! 
and yeah, some scratches and stuff, making it more detailed. The bottom has this nice slope. The back looks really cool. There's a bunch of thrusters there. The thing I like about it the most, though, is the sloping here, and the way it kind of connects with this. It's just, I like that a bunch. Plus, it comes with uh, this set. Here comes with a bunch of this uh, yellowish-orange color, so that's a really helpful color that they don't make much of. So you can get some pretty interesting pieces, especially this big dome piece. We can open up these sides, and sadly the inside isn't empty like it was in the movie. That's kind of a bummer. And then there's just a wrench and a fire extinguisher there, so it's, it's kind of bland there. And then here it's kind of bland. It's just empty, and then there's a storage container with nothing to store. Yay! This, I feel like this part of it's bland. I like this build, but that's just really bland. I mean, it's even a bunch of red and stuff, and I just accidentally shot off the missile. And once again, these door panels, I keep knocking them off. They fall off easily, so I feel like these side doors are a disappointment. Except I, once again, there that goes. I understand why they couldn't do the inside because of the way they did this. Because as you can see, this bubble canopy doesn't open up because of those things blocking it. So in order to get it, you actually pull that back. And then you can get them out. And there we go. You can get them out there. So I I really like that. It looks really cool. But once again, not very movie accurate. You guarantee you climb in here to get to the pod. So I would have liked it much better if they just somehow freed this up to make it open. Or like they could have had this flip up fairly easily. So I mean, I think they should have made that flip up. So that way you can also have the inside built up realistically enough space in there with maybe, you know, a little bench or something. So that would be more movie accurate. If you want this to be very movie accurate, you have a lot of customization to do there. These printed pieces won't work, and you'll need to remove one of those stickers. So it's not super movie accurate, especially with this part. But overall, I think it's a decent build, just not movie accurate. I'm, I'm just really salty that there's no space in there. I mean, come on, man. So overall, like it, but not movie accurate don't like the lack of space inside. I like the outside design, though. Now, this is the minifig everybody wants the set for. Gar well, four of these minifigs here are, all of the minifigs are exclusive, except he's the only one that's really different. I mean, Aisha's exclusive to this set. There's no other Aisha, unlike the other two minifigs, which they have made other versions of, except she's not interesting. This this is Mary Poppins, y'all. I mean, y'all knew. Uh, he's really awesome to get in the minifig form. Glad we finally got him. And he has this blue head, which has a lot of printing on it. You can see some scars there. The face is pretty good. It's really cool. There's like no back printing and no double face, which I understand because this uh, really cool transparent mohawk piece doesn't have enough room for it. And they give you an extra of those mohawks. So, I mean, woo! It's not really the most useful piece, except it's awesome. So, why complain? And then he has this golden arrow accessory for his weird whistle arrow thingamajig. Except why they make it in gold? It's not gold. It's silver with red. So I would have liked if they like made a new piece. These, this might be new. Pretty sure it's not new. I think they have made this before in gold, and that's why they kept it in gold. But I wish they would have like molded a new piece with the weird fins on the back and like double molded it with red and silver. I think that would have been really cool and shown some attention to detail there. But, sadly, it's just a golden arrow. I mean, some of the Bricklink arrows are a lot more accurate and work better. Also, if you look on the bottom of the chin, there's some stubble there. And then, on the front of the jacket here, he has this kind of generic Ravager print. So, if you want to make a bunch of Ravagers, that can be used for Ravagers. Just change out the hands, or if you want a Ravager with blue hands or blue gloves. There's a lot of straps there. There's the Ravager logo in the corner. The legs have that carry over. I wish they double molded the legs though because then the trench coat doesn't carry over anymore. So I wish they double molded the legs to continue the coat. Yeah, and there's just a bit of printing on the bottom there other than the continuation of the coat. On the back, there's just a simple buckle and some more detailing. And once again, wish they had double molded those legs. So yeah, overall, really cool minifig. There are a few flaws though. One of them being the accessory, which they also come with an extra one of these arrows, by the way. Thought I'd mention that. And also, I wish they had double molded legs. Otherwise, no complaints. So, now we have Aisha, another minifig, which the only version of her is in the set. I think she's pretty cool with the uh, blue outfit. 
which is more her battle outfit, not her queenly outfit. It's not as cool as her queenly outfit, though, so I kind of wish they had made that. Uh, it's not that interesting. It's just dark blue with some blue and gold detailing. She has this very common hairpiece in gold. The back there isn't that interesting either. So, I mean, she's not too interesting. This face, she looks really mad and frustrated. This face, she's just kind of calm and normal. And then her accessory here, it's this remote control for the drone I showed you earlier, which doesn't make sense because if you've seen the movie, they have these pod things they sit in to remote control them. They don't have a remote control with a big lever and the blue button and everything. But I feel like it was a decent way to do it without having to build, like, the weird whatever castle building palace thing they have where those pods are in. So... I, I'm fine with it, even though it's not very movie accurate. I am Groot. Yep, this is Groot. Baby Groot here. And I just gotta say, this is the most adorable thing ever! It's the version wearing the Ravager jacket, which he doesn't really wear for that long, so... And I wish they would have done just another normal Groot, like they did in the uh, Milano vs. Abelisk set. Except that's the expensive set, so you can't really get that one super easily. And then he has one of these uh, Annulax batteries in the movie there. And then on the front, there's just a zipper and the Ravager print. And then there's also all the green mossy detailing in the face on the top. And I don't think this is a double mold. I think they just printed that red on. And then left the hands and feet and head brown. The back, there is no printing except for that red. And he is just so adorable. And he has these two little uh, bar hands for clips. And once again, he's just so adorable. I mean, this, how is that not lovable? That's so adorable. I mean, it's, it's tiny comparison here. That is super tiny. It's like as tall as a minifig's legs. It's guaranteed he's a lot smaller in the movies, except they couldn't get him too small or else he'd be super easily losable. And they would have to give you like a million extras of him. Plus, then he wouldn't stay together and he'd be super easily breakable so I'm fine with them making him a bit bigger and a bit chubbier even though he was really skinny in the movie I understand them making him chubbier so that way he doesn't like break and everything now we got Star-Lord and once again exclusive and before you go in the comments oh Star-Lord comes in a million sets he comes in the Milano vs. Abelisk in this new season and then in the regular Guardians of the Galaxy he comes in a bunch of sets Except he does not have this design. He's not wearing that shirt. He doesn't have those prints. So, no. This is an exclusive minifig. And he has those two uh, Star-Lord gun pieces, which are really cool. And then he has the red jacket print there with the gray shirt underneath. His front face here is the Chris Pratt face that they use for this and Jurassic World. It's kind of the generic Chris Pratt face. And then he has... He's just kind of smile in there, a little smirk, which is a very Star Lordy face. He has this really cool hair and a dark nougat, I believe that is. And then this face, he's angry. And then he also has this jet pack, which is very simple. It's just a neck, bra neck bracket, square studs, and binoculars, but it looks good and it works well. It looks like a jet pack. And now, we're gonna take it off. Three, two, one, how? There he is without the jet pack, and I know that's probably not gonna be a super smooth transition, but I did it anyway. The back printing isn't that much, so it, it it's just a few lines, and they acknowledge the fact that it's going to be covered up by a jetpack most of the time, so they kind of went lazy with that. So, kind of sad that they didn't do much more with his back. So, overall, I think the set is pretty cool, especially uh, the minifigs, which uh, Yondu is definitely the best of them. Uh, this build is mediocre. The function doesn't work as properly as it should. That build is pretty cool, though. It's just a minor build, and also it's fairly massable, and this is one of the cheaper sets. So you can get a decent amount of these sets and get those, or you can just get the parts list and then buy a bunch of the pieces that you need. The main build here, I have some issues with it. It looks cool on the outside, but the movie accuracy isn't that good, and the I wish you could open it better. But overall... I think it's a pretty cool set, especially Yondu, though. I wish he had double molded legs and that uh, arrow was gray, but once again, cool set. Minifig's great. Few issues. Overall, cool. Peace.